Brandon Phillips leads off and Roy Halladay about ready to cash in on something he's waited for his entire career. And away we go on a bouncing ball to Jimmy Rollins. One pitch, one out. And that's a big part of the Roy Halladay story. It's one of the reasons he was able to finish nine games this year. And that's one of the reasons, one of the reasons he finishes nine games is early swings. Guys know if they get into deep counts with Roy Halladay, especially behind in the count, chances of getting on base are very slim. If they get a good pitch to hit early in the count, they'll be going after it. And this is an aggressive hitting Cincinnati team. Here is Orlando Cabrera. Halliday is strike throwing machine. And also picks up a lot of swings and misses. The Reds strike out a lot. But they're going to count on guys like Cabrera and Scott Rowland and Ramon Hernandez for some postseason experience. Many of these Reds in the playoffs for the first time in their careers. Cabrera is another guy that puts the ball in play early, has a low walk total. But here's a guy who's been to the postseason with the Red Sox, won a World Series with Boston. And he has been to the postseason the last four years. The Angels, the White Sox, the Twins last year, and now the Reds. Line drive type hitter. Not a lot of power. Didn't miss by much. He'll take the ball the other way, and if he gets behind in the count, he'll certainly go to right field. And this one looked like it just missed. And looks like it may have not missed. Well, Cabrera bothered by an injured oblique toward the end of the year. Back and healthy. Cincinnati Reds winners of the Central Division in the National League. A team that went 78 and 84 last year. But Dusty Baker now in his third year skippering this Reds ball club. 91 wins this season. 91 and 71. They outlasted the Cardinals in the NL Central by five games. Snapped the string in nine straight seasons of losing records. Last winning season for the Reds, 99. The last playoff appearance, 95. Long run for Victorino. Two down. League Division Series coverage on TBS is brought to you at HD by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. No stranger to postseason play here in Philadelphia. Fourth consecutive playoff appearance for the Phillies. A World Series title in 08. They finished the season on a string of 123 straight sellouts. And certainly packed in here today. And high expectations. In Philadelphia with his team this year. Joey Votto breaks his bat on the first offering from Halliday. Joey Votto is a good low ball hitter. But he likes to hit the ball to left center field. He's not just a dead pull hitter. An MVP candidate indeed. He hits the ball to all fields. How about these numbers? A 369 mark with runners in scoring position and huge numbers late in the game. Votto bangs one out. Win. Brian. All right, David, thank you. And uh, Walt Jockety has put the pieces back together. And David talked about the draft, Joe, but he's also brought in some of his former employees from the St. Louis Cardinals, like the man at the plate, Scott Rowland, who has been a, a big part of this resurgence this year. It was kind of a quiet trade last year from the Toronto Blue Jays. It went under the radar, but how good has Rowland been for the Reds this season? Well, it was a deal that raised a lot of eyebrows because of the cash that was going to be needed to take care of Scott Rowland's contract and the fact that he had been often injured. He was traded for Edwin Encarnacion. But Scott Rowland's a seven-time Gold Glove winner, and he's been to the postseason. He's a real gamer in every sense of the word, and he was a kind of presence that this ball club needed in their locker room too. He is a great leader by example if no other way.
Roland, the former Philly, gets roundly booed every time he's introduced here in Philadelphia. As Halliday strikes him out. Change up and a beauty. Boy, just dropped it right on the back part of the plate there. And rolling out in front. Outstanding. MLB postseason in Espanol. Live MLB postseason Spanish language feed available via SAP. The SAP button. Johnny Gomes for the Reds. Halliday has retired the first four. His first strikeout on Roland. And the free swinging Johnny Gomes at the plate. Expect to see a lot of first pitch strikes from Halliday. That makes the hitters at least a little less aggressive in terms of sitting on his fastball. It allows him to mix in his change up and cutter. There's a cutter and it's a beauty. Throws it hard sometimes around 90. 88 to 90. Now this is the part of the batting order for Roy Halladay where he can rack up the strikeouts with Gomes and Bruce and Drew Stubbs. Got it on his hands a bouncer to Valdez. Two outs. All right Joe tonight's language of the game is brought to you by Foster's and tonight we're talking Roy Halladay's strikeout to walk ratio. It's incredible when you look at the next closest guy and that's Josh Johnson of the Marlins. His was three point eight eight strikeouts to every walk and Roy Halladay's was twice that amazing. Jay Bruce speaking of built from the farm system here is one of the prize prospects from the Cincinnati minor league system Jay Bruce former first round draft pick and a bouncer out to Chase Udley and Roy Halliday picking him up and putting him down six up six down as we head to the bottom of the second and worst case scenario for the Cincinnati Reds as the Phillies chase the Cincinnati starter. An inning in two thirds he was a pitch away from getting out of the inning but now Travis Wood a rookie left hander who has had some success against Philadelphia this year enter this enters this game in the rain with two outs and Chase Utley coming up. This guy took a perfect game into the ninth inning against the Phillies earlier this year and there were a lot of people that thought maybe because he's left handed he should start game one against this left handed dominated lineup for the Phils. Well he didn't start but he's in here in the second inning. Travis Wood has been in the starting rotation for the Reds. Dusty Baker wanting to put four lefties in the bullpen. And Wood gets the early call here today as he faces Chase Hudley. Two on. Three runs are in for Philadelphia. RBIs from Halliday. And two runs batted in from Shane Victorino in a long two out, two strike battle with Volquez. Five consecutive base runners after two outs in this inning. Fastball cutters also a slider. Fastball from eighty nine to ninety three. Rain coming down heavily now as Wood hits the corner. Now we're being told this rain this current cell and I know you're a part time weatherman Joe but it's, it's only going to be here for a half an hour and then it it's going to pass so they'll try to play through it here. No problem for Phillies fans. They know all about rough weather in October for postseason play. Bouncing ball to Phillips. And the nightmare second for the Reds ends as the Phillies put three on the board, all with two outs, started by Halliday. And it's four to nothing, Philadelphia, as we go to the third inning. 
Well, that's a good sign. There's a rainbow. That means there's sun somewhere in Philadelphia. And a pot of gold for the Phillies in the bottom of the second inning with three runs on three hits, chasing Edinson Volquez. And now the task for the Reds to try to figure out Roy Halladay. He's retired the first six, has a strikeout. Took him just 22 pitches to get through the first two innings. And he's already ahead of Drew Stubbs 0 and 2. In the infield who wants it. It'll be Valdez and Howard come together and the much taller Ryan Howard makes a catch for out number one. If that was going to be a jump ball I think Ryan Howard would win just about every time. All he had to do is just reach up and he's going to get closer to it than Valdez. But even after the bump Valdez lost that collision too. It's the only sport where a world class athlete standing on the mound is not allowed to catch a pop up. <laughs> he's a pitcher. Oh that's right he's not necessarily an athlete. There you go. Coming from an outfielder. Mm -hmm. No, Halliday with one away here in the third inning and looking for the shutdown inning after the Phillies put three on the board and there's strike one again. He is now eight for eight in first pitch strikes. And a lot easier to throw first pitch strikes when you're up four to nothing. Ramon Hernandez talented Cincinnati catcher got some postseason experience. going to be a tough road for the Reds hitters but again this is an outstanding offense and a very good come from behind team and a quick strike team. But they got to have some base runners. That is a fair ball and Ruiz makes the play on Hernandez. Say catch all the action of the 2010 Major League Baseball Division Series on TBS. Game two of a triple header today started with the Tampa Bay Rays hosting the Texas Rangers and the man who made his postseason debut here last year Cliff Lee picking up the win for the Texas Rangers. Ten strikeouts for Cliff Lee today and Texas strikes first their first postseason win since 1996 in their first postseason since 1999. Cliff Lee went seven innings just one run struck out ten David Price with six and two thirds today that gave up nine hits and five runs driven into right field worth right there. So Travis Wood the Cincinnati pitcher has the best bolt of the night so far but it's another one two three inning for Big Roy game one of the NLDS Phillies and the Reds Roy Halladay has retired the first nine on the mound for the Phillies. Meanwhile offensively Philadelphia with three in the second after scoring a run in the first four to nothing Ryan Howard leads off against the young lefty the rookie Travis Wood. Edson Volquez goes an inning and two thirds. You were talking about Cliff Lee a minute ago this guy's from Arkansas Travis Wood and you say he works out with Travis Lee somehow in the in the wintertime. Yeah they're good buds in Arkansas live close to each other as Wood strikes out Ryan Howard. Well he was the Southern League Pitcher of the Year last year at an ERA under two and the Reds Minor League Pitcher of the Year. Not overpowering but good control again. Fastball cutter and a slider. 23 years of age from Alexander Arkansas former second rounder of the Cincinnati Reds he was in in that 2005 draft and he's getting his turn in the spotlight here trying to settle this game down for Cincinnati. Five eleven hundred and sixty five pounds. I think the 5'11's a little bit generous. Mm -hmm. 
One thing's for sure, he's come in throwing strikes. And Jason Worth had the key at bat in that second inning, even though he was put out on a ground out. It was a nine pitch at bat for Jason Worth, kind of set up the rest of the inning. Volquez retired the first two hitters and then could not get out of the inning. Five consecutive base runners, two walks and three hits as Wood rings up Jason Worth. Back to back strikeouts here in the third. One of his favorite pitches is a backdoor cutter. That one came across the heart of the plate. But he if you give up on a pitch away a little bit that you think is going to stay outside you're going to pay the price Worth did there. Well, Travis Wood and Mike Leak the two rookie pitchers for Dusty Baker this year Mike Leak has a shoulder injury and he is not on the postseason roster but in the first half it was Mike Leak who was a big surprise in the Cincinnati rotation and a big reason why the Reds were able to stay in the race in the National League Central in the second half of the season it was Travis Wood. And the 23 year old Wood against the 38 year old Ibanez with two away. It's a pretty tight strike zone tonight from crew chief John Hirschbeck. That one's hit well. Back is Bruce over his head. It bounces off the wall. Ibanez is going to challenge him here. And the throw is late. That's a double for Ibanez. And more two out trouble for the Cincinnati Reds. Ibanez getting up there in years, but man, can he hit, especially the fastball again. And it was about location. Hernandez was set up outside the outside corner. That pitch had the middle of the plate. And with Bruce's arm, he knew he had to turn it on a little bit and made it in there easily. But he can still hit. Now Cincinnati will pitch around Ruiz to face Wilson Valdez. Base runners are usually what you try to avoid in this ballpark with so much home run clout in both of these lineups. But Dusty Baker is going to take his chances with Wilson Valdez as opposed to Carlos Ruiz who had the key walk in that second inning that sparked the two out rally. Uh, Ruiz is so good with runners in scoring position and especially with two out in that situation. The Banez, though back to him real quick. He had the real good second first half last year and then a bad second half and a bad first half this year to the point where the Phillies thought well, you know what. He may be used up. It was basically a whole year of poor hitting by Raul, and he got to turn around the second half, and he's still hot. I give credit to Charlie Manuel for sticking with him. And then it's Ibanez two out double that has Travis Wood in trouble here in the third inning. Wilson Valdez, an infield hit in the second and that one's into right center field Stubbs makes the play and the inning is over so a scoreless inning the first of the game for the Reds a small success Cincinnati coming up Halliday nine in a row retired it's a good thing we rehearsed that yes I thought that went well excellent Roy Halliday back on the mound timings everything top of the Reds order with Brandon Phillips, Orlando Cabrera, then Joey Votto. Phillips swung at the first pitch in the first inning, bounced out to short. Most of the outs on the ground against Halliday so far. Only three outs in the air at this point. Has just one strikeout that came against Roland. And that didn't miss by much. Well there's nothing you like better if you're the Cincinnati Reds and the fact that you're already down four. Halliday set down the first nine and it's raining and you're trying to keep your hands dry. As if you didn't have enough to battle. 
And if you're Brooke Jacoby, the Cincinnati hitting coach, the game plan to get back in this game is what? Well, the game plan is to try to get this guy to make a mistake or two so you can get some base runners. You need a base runner so that you might get somebody to get you right back in the game quickly. Well, that hit Phillips, I believe, or they're going to call it a foul ball. Caught a piece of the bat. So a foul ball. Yeah. Close, though. Almost got him. Brandon Phillips missed a good part of the season. He was hit by a big fastball. Had a hand injury. Suffered that injury in San Francisco this year. As Halliday strikes him out, a called strike three, the second K for Roy Halliday. Fastball tailing back. Looks like Phillips gave up on it, thinking it was high. But 10 for 10 in first pitch strikes, he is dictating to every hitter that comes up there. Well, last year the Phillies had Cliff Lee starting game one making his first postseason appearance this year it's Roy Halladay and Halladay is rolling along a lot like Cliff Lee did last year Lee went the distance against the Colorado Rockies in game one of the LDS last year and a series that the Phillies would win in four games on their way to the World Series 0 and 2 on Cabrera. Man, oh man, Roy Halladay locked and loaded here early. His third strikeout. Brian, I know it's been a few days since he pitched, and this is the ninth day. But folks around the, the Phillies camp said that in his last start against Washington, uh, it's his last start of the year, and he still pitched a complete game, went nine innings. And they had already clinched the division title. A two-hit shutout against Washington. No walk, six strikeouts, and everybody said it might have been the best game he pitched all year outside the perfect game. Had the perfect game against the Marlins in Miami at the end of May. As if Halliday was just dialing it up for the postseason in his final regular season start. Joey Votto. That gives you an idea of the stuff of Halliday. Votto's a good fastball hitter. And, and he's is, late on a 91 mile an hour fastball. And he was the first time up too. Remember he broke his bat on the first swing and then jammed him on a ground ball to second. He's trying to tie him up inside. Let's see if they stay in there. On the ground. Long throw from Rollins and it is a good one. A cannon from Jimmy Rollins. A one two three inning Halliday continues to deal we head to the bottom of the fourth back in Philadelphia Citizens Bank Park game one of the NLDS Phillies and the Reds and Roy Halliday got a big ovation when he was announced to lead off this fourth inning as well as he's pitching having retired the first 12 in this game Halliday's base hit really opened it up in the second inning for Philadelphia an RBI single from Roy Halliday gave the Phillies a two to nothing lead and Bugs Bunny would be proud and he's kind of has the Bugs Bunny swing and miss changeup going does Roy Halliday sure does on the run is Bruce and he's got it in foul territory and we're pleased to be joined now by Red Skipper Dusty Baker and Dusty at the obvious question how do you guys get back in against Roy Halliday who looks like he's on his A game at this point. Well he's definitely on his A game and the thing he has going he's still in quality strikes uh, strike one he's getting ahead of guys look like he has great movement tonight. Main thing we just got to string together some hits and uh, you know we might have to start attacking him early early in the uh, in the count because right now <laughs> it's not working what we're doing. Hey Dusty I know we talked about this earlier today about if if Volquez didn't have his good stuff and had to come out early. You had Wood ready to go. Well, you have that scenario. How many innings would you like to get out of him? Well, yeah, you know, we're going to take him as far as we can until possibly, uh, you know, we have to hit for him. And, uh, uh, you know, the thing about it, Volke had his good stuff. He just didn't have his good location. And, uh, you know, what uh, the, uh, the hit that hurt was a two out RBI by Doc Holliday, you know, who's usually doesn't get many hits. And then the then the big hit by Victorino, you know, the blooper in there. So, you know, he had good stuff. He just didn't have his location, and that hit by Doc Holliday really hurt. 
And our thanks to the red skipper Dusty Baker for giving us a little bit of time and uh, a tough decision for Dusty Baker as Edinson Volquez was so close to getting out of that second inning and all of that damage done with two away four to nothing in this ballpark typically doesn't look like much runs can be easy to come by but with Roy Halladay on the mound it looks like a mountain at this point for Cincinnati it looks that way but you're right Brian the way the ball jumps out of this ballpark and, and there's not a lot of wind tonight to knock anything down that might be headed for the seats uh, you're still in this ball game and the Reds I think Dusty's right I think you got to be a little more aggressive on that first pitch strike that he's throwing so often he's 10 out of 11, 11 out of 12 now in that category especially if you get a good fastball to hit well Travis Wood posted the first scoreless inning of the game for Cincinnati had a couple of strikeouts in the third inning Gave up a double to Ibanez, then an intentional walk. Faces Jimmy Rollins, batting for the third time already. That one's hit well, left center field. Drew Stubbs near the wall will run it down for out number two. Now we're keeping an eye on Jimmy Rollins tonight. He has the hamstring tightness came back at the end of the year said he's OK said he's 100 percent but he, haven't, he hasn't really had an opportunity to unleash and to do a lot of running but that'll certainly be a big question for Charlie Manuel as this series and this postseason continues for Philadelphia. Well he's a vital part of their offense especially with the running game. And we noticed something on the base hit by Victorino now this was a three two count and Rollins is running from first and he's not really sprinting but this little ball dunked in there and that's normally a pitch that he or a swing that he usually goes first to third easily on and he only made it to second base on a full count with two out. I think that gave us a pretty good indication that he's far from 100 percent running wise. That might be something to pay attention to. With that said we asked Charlie Manuel about his his health status because the decision to put him in the leadoff spot of the batting order depends on Jimmy Rollins ability and willingness to run. I mean speed is part of his game. The Phillies are already without Placido Polanco. Not sure how long he's going to be out. The day off tomorrow will certainly help the Phillies in that regard. But they're already a man down in their infield. Everybody understood how and why Charlie Manuel chose the longer series the eight day series because of his three aces he could use them and no one else if need be if he went to a game five but it also was an advantage for Dusty Baker in his bullpen if he had to use some guys say go to his bullpen in the fifth inning or sixth inning and use some guys well then they would get a day off for his bullpen too. what he hadn't counted on was having to go to the bullpen in the second. Victorino skies one out to Stubbs. And a 1 2 3 inning for Travis Wood. He has settled this game down for the Reds. Cincinnati coming to bat against Halliday. Sellout crowd at Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia. Scott Rowland leads off against Roy Halliday. Halliday, four no hit innings. He has three strikeouts, punched out two in the fourth inning. His first strikeout was Scott Rowland. Just great movement on everything tonight. I'd say that he was really ready and jacked up for this first postseason appearance. He's waited a long time. Big cut and a miss. Well, Halliday has thrown 46 pitches at this point, only eight out of the strike zone, 38 for strikes. And getting a lot of swings and misses. As Roland lays off. Eleven years Roy Halladay before he makes his first postseason start here tonight. Three hundred and twenty major league starts under his belt and a long time coming and Joe you said he's ready and he looks every bit ready tonight as he backdoors Scott Roland the comeback sinker and another strikeout for Halladay that's number four.
pleased to be joined now by Rich Doobie, the pitching coach of the Phillies. And uh, Rich, Roy Halladay looks like he's on his game tonight. Give us uh, your take from your seat. Well, he's been commanding everything very well so far, and uh, hopefully that will continue. But uh, we got him, got him a little cushion, and uh, you know he's pretty good when he gets a lead. Uh, so again, he'll continue to pound the strike zone and see where we can get. Rich, this is Joe, and outside of the perfect game down in Florida, I was told his last start against Washington, the complete game two hitter, may have been the best game he pitched all year leading into this. Well, he's had he's had a lot of good ones, but the uh, game in Washington was very good. Um, I think uh, getting a little extra rest and uh, us getting close to. Uh, Getting, getting in these playoffs has done a lot for him, and uh, he, he seems pretty fresh right now. As Rich Doobie, Philadelphia pitching coach, we appreciate his time between innings, and they're on their feet again. As Halliday has Gomes in an 0 2 count. Number five for Halliday. 14 in a row he has sat down. Here are the last two strikeouts. The one that Scott Rowland thought was outside. That did try to come back and was off the plate. He had reason to be upset. And then Gomes chasing a bad ball. And that's exactly where Ruiz wanted it. He wanted it to bounce up there. Well, you heard Dusty Baker last inning say he'd like to see his hitters try to jump on Halliday a little earlier. Try not to get down in the count. But Halliday, so smart, has countered. Some change up, split fingers, first pitch. Well, I, I give Ruiz a lot of credit for that too, Brian, because he's recognizing that the Reds are trying to get out on him in the early part of the count. So he's mixing it up. Well, the first goal for Cincinnati is to get Roy Halliday in the stretch. He's been pitching out of the windup this entire game. Good breaking ball there. He hasn't thrown a lot of them, but that was a beauty. And a three ball count. That ball went down. It didn't come back. He was trying to throw it back up fastball, and it didn't. 3 2 pitch. And Bruce lays off. So the first base runner for Cincinnati comes with two outs in the fifth inning. As Jay Bruce draws the walk. And now the Reds with their powerful lineup hoping for a quick strike here with two outs. Yeah the bottom of the, their lineup is no slouch either with Bruce Stubbs and Hernandez Stubbs had a great finish to his season. Hit 350 over his last 24 games and raised his average 18 points. He was a guy that at the beginning of the year I thought Brian was I mean you just spin the ball and he had chase set up to hit fastballs and pull everything but with the help of Brooks Jacoby their hitting coach and Dusty Baker he's started to hit the ball with some authority to the other to the opposite field and it's really helped him 22 home runs during the regular season and that goes along with 30 stolen bases he is a power speed threat. Drew Stubbs just his second year in the major leagues and he was on a fast finish during the regular season as well from August 1st hitting over 300 and there was a time there for Cincinnati the Reds made a deal for Jim Edmonds who was unable to go in the postseason with an Achilles injury that Stubbs playing time was in question and just as they brought Jim Edmonds in in a trade with the Milwaukee Brewers Stubbs got hot and it ended up being a no brainer that Stubbs not only became the everyday center fielder down the stretch for the Reds but also the starting center fielder for the postseason and can really run and at this stage of Jim Edmonds career Stubbs is actually a better center fielder ball and two strikes and a bouncing ball out to Rollins hitting over perfect game lost no hitter still intact. 4 nothing Phillies. And it might be time to start calling your friends because Roy Halladay has five no hit innings and has some serious swing and miss stuff at this point. Uh, his stuff is uh, certainly not out of the question for him to maybe go nine this way because the way his ball is moving. 
What a start for him in his first postseason outing. Halliday with five strikeouts. Travis Wood has come on and pitched well in relief. Edinson Volquez, speaking of swing and miss stuff, he's the guy you expect a lot of swings and misses, but just two swings and misses from the Phillies. And Volquez inning in two thirds. It was a quick exit for the Red starter. But Wood has posted two scoreless innings after he got out of the mess in the second. Travis Wood during the regular year, mostly in the second half, a 5 and 4 record in 17 starts. Had an earned run average at 3.51. And when you needed strikes, he is the command type pitcher that Dusty Baker called on. He's been very impressive here. Chase Hudley in the 2 2 fouled away. He's 23 years old, too. Those Southern League numbers last year when he was the pitcher of the year in double A in that league, he was 9 and 3 with a 1.21 ERA, 121. Now, Udley was his first hitter. So he has gone through the batting order now as Udley sends one high in the air to right. Back is Bruce. Shading the raindrops from his eyes. And he makes a catch for out number one. He put his glove up. I'm saying, I don't see any sun out right now. With the rain coming down on Jay Bruce. Might have been shooting to see the shadow on his face. Might have been some lights there, too, that he was trying to block the glare on. Is it still raining? Because I, I don't see the drops. Maybe we've. We found our window, Joe. Yeah. The weather window is here. Yeah, maybe you're right. Just shading from the lights, not the uh, raindrops coming down. One gone for Ryan Howard. Howard is 0 for 2. Wood struck him out his last time up. That one's hit well. Deep center field. But the wind knocks it down. Stubbs has to make a basket catch as the wind is really picked up here. I wondered where he was going because from our vantage point, that ball was headed to the right side of the 401 mark. Stubbs was running to the left side of the 401 mark and realized this ball was coming back toward right center and dying and had to make a quick adjustment. There is some wind now. Starching the flags out going across from left to right. Now we were here last year for game one against the Colorado Rockies in the division series and the wind was blowing up to 40 miles an hour. The Phillies outfielders had no trouble but the Rockies outfielders did. And you go back two years in this ballpark the way the winds and the jet streams come across. It was the Milwaukee Brewers who struggled in the first game of the division series back in 08. Ball and a strike on Jason Worth. Count goes to one and two. So the Phillies with four runs and we got Howard and Worth combined 0 for 5 so far. Phillies went 23 and 7 after September 1st to put away the division and they did it largely without Utley and Howard being hot hitters and they're 0 for tonight yet they still lead four to nothing. We head to the six Halliday back on the mound. Now the story right now is Roy Halliday. As Ramon Hernandez sends one in the air Jason Worth and one away in the sixth. So Dusty Baker will Call on his bench now. Travis Wood, impressive for three and a third, keeping the Phillies at four as Juan Francisco will pinch hit for Travis Wood. 
one of the hardest hit balls all night was from Travis Wood as a matter of fact ended up as a line drive out. He's a good athlete. He swings the bat well. He's very fast. He's clocked at four flat to first base. So Travis Wood a good accounting for himself tonight coming in in the second inning. And it's strike one. Which has been a common theme tonight for Roy Halliday. Back up the middle. Ranging over is Rollins in time to away. Two up, two down for Roy Halliday in the sixth inning. Don't forget Conan coming in November. Today's aerial coverage made possible by AT&T. November 8th. And a great view of Citizens Bank Park, South Philadelphia. Beautiful. Great ballpark. What an electric atmosphere here. They sell out every day, regular season, postseason. Boy, they have something to watch this year. Plenty of stars offensively, Joe, as we talked about in the open. This is a club, the Phillies, that have won the National League East year after year perennial contenders in the playoffs now they're starting to talk about a dynasty here in Philadelphia but arguably the three best starting pitchers you could assemble for a postseason run it reminds you of back in the mid 90s with the Atlanta Braves when no they were question. rolling out John very, Smoltz and very comparable Glavin and Maddox and even Steve Avery yeah but they kept adding two people adding people to those guys that were not necessarily compliments to them, but made the staff that much deeper. It is Jason Worth. And it's six innings of no hit ball for Roy Halliday. Can he keep it going? Four to nothing, Phillies. New pitcher for the Reds, Logan Andrusik. And he inherits a four nothing deficit here. Raul Ibanez leads off. The tall right hander, Andrusik. 6'8. Six, 6'8, eight. Six, eight, 225 out of Shiner, Texas. And lots and lots of cutters from this guy. 91 to 95 on his fastball, but he developed a cutter that pretty much saved his career. On Drusek. Well, oh, he throws it away. And Ibanez on his way to second. Had an out right in front of him on Drusik. Lobbed one to first base. And that'll be an error on the pitcher. See the angst on the face of Dusty Baker here because this gets an inning started for the Phillies. It shouldn't have. And that just was airmailed over the head of Joey Votto. Boy, that wasn't even close. And Ramon Hernandez trying to settle down on Drew Sick. Joe talked about his his minor league career. So so numbers in the minor leagues. Nothing that would indicate a a major presence in the big leagues. But he found a cut fastball last year. Pitched so well this spring, made the ball club, and he's been a good middle reliever for Dusty Baker this season. Good fastball. And a swing and a miss to Ruiz. Ryan, we go back to the World Series a few years ago when Detroit's pitchers made a ton of errors, if you recall, that really hurt them in the World Series against the Cardinals. But the defense by pitchers lately has really been magnified, maybe because of that World Series. And when you look at the, the Reds' total errors this year, 72 errors, we told you that they were the least in the National League tied with the Padres. Well, of those 72 errors, 12 were by their pitchers. And another one made here. That allows Ibanez to reach to start the inning as Ruiz rolls one to Roland. Makes it look easy. 
And one away in the sixth inning. We check in with Matt Weiner in Atlanta. What's going on, Matt? Hey, Brian. Time for a game break presented by Bank of America. The Twins' first playoff game at Target Field. The postseason begins there tonight against the Yankees. Like so many teams, they have health concerns, including the knee of Joe Maurer, but he is slated to bat third tonight. Game one, Twins-Yankees coming up here in prime time on TBS. All right, Matt, thanks. And a rematch of the 09 Division Series. But this time around, the Twins get to host. The Yankees, the wild card team in the American League. And how about the left-handers on display today in the American League Series? Earlier today, you had Cliff Lee and David Price matching up. Lee, the victory over Price in the Tampa Bay Rays. And tonight, possibly the Cy Young Award winner in the American League. It'll be a close contest with CC Sabathia and Felix Hernandez of the Mariners, but Liriano goes for Minnesota. Valdez breaks his bat, and two men are out as Ibanez advances to third base. Listen to the hand building for Roy Halladay. I love that sign. Doc Halliday. He's known as Big Roy around here. Little Roy will pitch tomorrow. Roy Oswald, or rather Friday. And underhand this time. Not a bad idea. Andrusik <laughs> makes the adjustment. <laughs> he, he learned. <laughs> Halliday's the headliner. Six no hit innings. Center stage belongs to Roy Halladay tonight. Game one of the NLDS. Halladay has not allowed a hit through the first six innings. The longest no hit bid in the postseason since Daisuke Matsuzaka pitching for the Red Sox in 08 against the Tampa Bay Rays. He went six no hit innings in the ALCS of 08. See, and this is what make, makes him so tough. He starts off the inning with a real slow curveball for a called strike. And then he busts Cabrera right in on his belt buckle to keep him honest and keep him off the outside part of the plate. It's not that he just has good location, folks. It's not that he just has a good changeup. He throws hard, too. He's been around 93, 94 all night with movement. Orlando Cabrera is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Halliday with five strikeouts so far tonight. And the 1 2 fouled away. Howard will give it a look. That'll end up in the seats. Charlie Manuel told us today in our pregame meeting with him that he calls Roy Halliday a big Greg Maddox. He said he's bigger, stronger, and throws a little harder, but he said he pitches the same way and with the same effectiveness. In, out, up, down, and throws strikes with all his pitches. I thought that was a tremendous compliment. No, Halliday drastically changed his pitching style. As a member of the Toronto Blue Jays, he was up in the late 90s. Actually, his first major league game, he took a no hitter into the ninth inning, but that was by a pitcher who threw over the top. Halliday had to go back to the minor leagues. In 01 and develop what you're seeing here today more hunched over hiding pitches throwing the splitter the hard curve the change up the fastball that moves in different directions because over the top he couldn't keep that consistency couldn't stay on top of the baseball it was actually Buck Martinez our colleague who was the manager of the Blue Jays at the time he had Mark Connor shift Halliday down to Dunedin where he could work on this new pitching style. And it was really Mel Queen. Mel Queen, yeah. Mel Queen who got Halliday to the release point where he's at now, the three quarter release point. A 3 2 count. And a bouncer out to Udley. Got him. Only his third three ball count of the night. And now let's look at tonight's Blackberry Torch Stat Summary. As you see the Cincinnati Reds or some of the Reds 
And the on base percentage leaders Joey Votto 424 number one in the league Votto hit 324 this year second best batting average in the National League he was third in home runs and he was third in runs batted in and for a good part of the summer he was putting up a serious challenge to a triple crown in the National League. Votto stepped out on him not a bad idea to try to break his rhythm a little bit. Votto a couple of ground outs against Halliday tonight. Strike. Roy Halliday's not finished reinventing himself either Brian because when he came to the Phillies Rich Duby suggested he changes grip on his change up and went to the split finger grip on his change and that's helped him. Well, you can't blame Votto at this point. No. Don't blame him at all. Anything it takes to try to disrupt this rhythm of Roy Halladay. Which will only rev up these fanatic fans here in Philadelphia. Over to third. Here's Valdez. In time, two away in the seventh inning. And the ground balls keep coming from all different angles, all different types of pitches. He will change his arm slot just a little bit for some right handers at times to get them maybe to buckle their knees some if he's going to throw a slider. He doesn't do it necessarily to lefties, but he will drop down a little bit more on right handers. Sounds like Scott Rowland's turn to hit. Yeah. Strike one all night. Rowland has struck out twice. Argued a call in the fifth inning. Oh, and two. And got a high strike call. 19 out of 22 first pitch strikes. The only blemish, a walk in the fifth inning. The 0 2 to Rowan. Just got a piece. Now, the closest thing to a hit came off the bat of the pitcher, Travis Wood. Back of the third inning hit a line drive out to Jason Worth. Look at that sinker. What a pitch. That was at 93. Wasn't trying to throw a strike with it, just make it look like a strike coming up there. So Roland would offer, and he did. And then it sinks out of the zone. Not anything you could do with that pitch except foul it off. I want to show you something here. Right there. See the glove on the ground? That's what Ruiz wanted. He wanted him to bounce it, and he did exactly what his catcher wanted. See what he has in mind here. Ball and two strikes on Rowan. And they'll ask if he went. No, he didn't. Bruce Dreckman says he checked his swing. Yeah, nice. good call. He stopped it. So two and two. Two out seventh inning. Got him. Roy Halliday. Seven no hit innings. And you better believe it is October time here in Philadelphia. Four to nothing Phillies. The story is Halliday. He has not allowed a hit through seven innings. And he is six outs away from a no hitter. The only blemish today for Roy Halladay was a two out walk to Jay Bruce. Otherwise he's been perfect. The only hard hit balls really all night have come from the nine spot in the order. Travis Wood the pitcher lying to right and the pinch hitter Juan Francisco hit a sharp grounder back through the box that almost got through into center field but Jimmy Rollins made a good play on it.
Travis Wood by the way did a great job coming in in the second inning with runners aboard getting out of that and then blanking the Phillies over the next three innings three and a third innings of one hit shutout ball. Now Volk has an inning in two thirds struggled here tonight in his first start in the postseason Dusty Baker wanting to go with the power he wanted to go with the the plus stuff of Edinson Volquez against these Philadelphia Phillies and it did not work out well for Baker and the Reds at this point but Wood and Andrusek have kept the Reds in the game somewhat. But right now it is a long hill to climb for the Cincinnati Reds against Roy Halladay. Top of the order for the Phillies. They try to tack on here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Andrusek committed an error in the sixth inning, but then three ground ball outs. And when he's right, that's exactly what you'll get. Well, Cincinnati feels very strongly about their young pitching. You've seen Wood tonight, Logan Andrusik, a couple of rookies. And a breaking ball, and Rollins able to check his swing. The Reds' most playoff experienced pitcher is Bronson Arroyo, and he'll get the ball Friday against Roy Oswald. With respect to Roy Halliday, it's one of those things where you always know he's capable of having no hit stuff when he goes out there. He's that good on any given night. I just never expected in his first postseason appearance for him to come out and dominate this lineup. Cabrera will run it down in the grass, and Jimmy Rollins is retired. Well, fans, if you want to hear the biggest names in sports broadcasting, think about the hot topics in their sports. Check out Behind the Mic, presented by Allstate, exclusively on SI.com. Over 46,000 on hand tonight at Citizens Bank Park as we kick off the 2010 postseason. Rangers beating the Tampa Bay Rays earlier today. Cliff Lee, a Philly last year and a star in the postseason for the Philadelphia Phillies, picked up the win for Texas earlier today. And in the middle game of our triple header, it's Roy Halladay. Gene Victorino with hits in the first and second inning that were part of the rallies in the first and second. The last two division series, 08 against Milwaukee, he hit 357. Last year against Colorado, he hit 353. He's off to a good start this year. Now, Victorino with that one out double in the first inning, quickly stole third base, and that kind of set the table. For the night, at least in the early going, as Victorino takes a strike. And it was a long battle between Victorino and Edinson Volquez in the second inning. Won by Victorino with that two out RBI single, drove in a pair of runs. By the way, for Volquez, the shortest outing in a postseason since Hiroki Corona lasted an inning and a third for the Dodgers against, guess who? The Phillies last year. That was in game three of the NLCS. So the Phils chase another one early here tonight. It's Victorino skies one. Joey Votto wants it. Almost squeezed it out. But the bullpen for the Reds has done exactly what it needed to do and that's hold the Phillies off hoping the offense could come back and mount a charge against Halliday he just hasn't cooperate cooperated well with Chase Utley coming up a lefty Dusty Baker will go to another left hander in that bullpen Bill Braid loosening and we'll have a pitching change here so two outs in the Philadelphia seventh four to nothing Phillies will set up 
Bill Bray when we come back. Back in Philadelphia, where Roy Halladay at age 33 is showing what he can do in his postseason debut. He said yesterday that he really liked being in Toronto. He loved pitching for the Blue Jays and for their fans. But he was growing concerned that at this stage of his career, he would never get an opportunity to show what he could do in a postseason. He said that he had a limited window of time and that he had to make the most out of every opportunity he had going forward. He wanted to come to Philadelphia. He wanted to come to the Phillies because he liked this organization and he knew this organization with its veteran players would have a chance to compete for a championship. He actually said that if he hadn't been traded to Philadelphia, he may well have stayed in Toronto this year and then explored free agency over the offseason. Brian, I think he's done pretty well in his first playoff experience. Well, no doubt about that. And reminiscent of Cliff Lee, even better than Cliff Lee a season ago. And remember, the Blue Jays still paying the freight for Roy Halladay this year. His extension kicks in next season. So he signed a long term deal with the Philadelphia Phillies. And what a ride it looks like it's going to be for Phillies fans with Halladay on the mound. Now the Phillies with two outs and it's Bill Bray out of Dusty Baker's bullpen to face Chase Udley with two outs and nobody on. And Bill Bray one of four lefties that Dusty Baker can call on. The, the one we're all anxious to see Joe excuse me is a Chapman. Yeah I'm anxious to see that fireballer. This guy's pretty much a slider machine against left handed hitters. Not overpowering. It's fastball in the high 80s generally right back to him nice play and Bray is out of the inning so it's back on Roy watch six outs away from a no hitter in game one of the NLDS stay with us well the Philadelphia Phillies have had 10 no hitters in their history including Roy Halladay's perfect game against the Florida Marlins on May 29th in Miami struck out 11 on that occasion just a brilliant performance but honestly Brian I don't know that his stuff's any better than than it is tonight he has been brilliant tonight Johnny Every, Gomes leads off for the Reds everything from a 94 fastball to a 79 change up speed wise and everything in between with his cut cutter and slider well, a breaking ball well, 1968 as is officially known as the year of the pitcher. This was kind of the reincarnation of the year of the pitcher with five no hitters this year. Halliday with one of two perfect games this season. And down goes Gomes. They'll have to secure it at first. No problem. Five outs away from a no hitter. Seven strikeouts. Big breaking ball there, got him. And he's had nine 0 and 2 counts tonight, Brian. That is just dominating. Unbelievable. Here's Jay Bruce, the only base runner of the night against Roy Halliday. He walked back in the fifth. Halliday's got it. Four outs away. Two up, two down in the eighth. Well, the longest no hitter since Jim Longborg of the Boston Red Sox went seven and two thirds against the St. Louis Cardinals. That was in game two of the 67 World Series. Of course, the last no hitter in postseason play, Don Larson, the most famous of the no hitters. That was in 56. Halliday, four outs away. Two gone of the eighth. Here's Stubbs. Strike. And still peppering that fastball in at 93. Again, a workhorse. Nine complete games this year. Led the league in that category. Led an innings pitch, 250 plus innings. He's only thrown 93 pitches.
And if you're just joining us, you're here at just the right time. Roy Halladay, eight no hit innings. We'd love to show you Roy Halladay in the dugout, but talk about being iced. He ices himself. He goes underneath <laughs> into the clubhouse. That's his normal routine, though. Yeah. He makes it easy on the rest of the players. He may be working out. I mean, this guy is so dedicated to his regimen between starts. He may be getting a head start on that somewhere. So it's Bill Bray back on the mound to face Ryan Howard. Yeah, the right hander next in Jason Ward, then the lefty Ibanez. And uh, one would speculate if Dusty Baker wants to, with the day off tomorrow, get some of these young pitchers in a game, we might see a role as Chapman to face Raul Ibanez. We'll have to wait and see. Now, Dusty normally doesn't like to use Chapman in the middle of an inning, likes him to start an inning. But uh, Dusty Baker told us earlier today he would love to get him out there as soon as possible to get his first taste of the postseason. Well, their bullpen has done a terrific job so far. Wood, Andrusik, and Bill Bray got one out last inning. Nick Massett getting ready for Jason Wirth. Philly's got a run of the first, three in the second. One of those driven in by Roy Halliday. He swung at the first pitch he saw from Edinson Volquez and drove in the second Philadelphia run. Ambushed a fastball and hit it hard. Got him. Howard is rung up. So Bill Bray with a strikeout his first. With the lead and with what's going on not too much of an argument from Ryan Howard but he thought that was inside looked like a good call from John Hirschbeck and it was. And after that strikeout Bill Bray will stay. Worth is 0 for 3 a couple of strikeouts here tonight. Ryan Howard and Jason Worth combined 0 for 7 in this game. The Phillies have had just one base runner since the fourth inning. And that was on an error by Andrusik as Bruce makes the catch. Two outs, two up, two down for Bray. And now let's take a look at tonight's Nissan game summary. Edson Volk has started with an inning in two thirds, chased early. And it was all a two out rally by the Phillies in that three run second inning. Roy Halladay, eight innings of no hit baseball. That's about all you need to know right there. And he's doing it against the best hitting team in the National League in terms of the numbers this year. What is a strange feeling here at Citizens Bank Park. Normally, Phillies fans want to see offense. They want to see hits, home runs. It kind of feels like they're ready to get this inning over with. <laughs> they want an out <laughs> so they can put Roy Halliday back in the middle. Well, their offense has been the focal point of their ball club the last three years in the postseason. Yes, they've had good pitching, got great pitching from Hamels, for example, in their drive to the World Series two years ago. Last year they had Hamels and Lee and Moyer and Blanton. They had a nice collection. Hamels not as good last year as he was in 08. But now, different story with their three aces at the top of their rotation. Rose Walton Hamels having a good time over there. Two of the three uh, as the H2O. As they're known here in Philadelphia, Halliday, Hamels, and Oswald. Ibanez. Orlando Cabrera will settle, make the catch, 
And here we go to the ninth. Roy Halladay, three outs away from a no hitter in the postseason. Four to nothing, the Phillies, the story, Roy Halladay. And history on the line here in Philadelphia. All zeros. Eight no hit innings for Halliday at his first postseason start. Don Larson, he's looking for some company here tonight. Game five of the 56 World Series through the perfect game, beating the Brooklyn Dodgers. Strike one. That has been the story all night for Halliday as he gets ahead of Ramon Hernandez in the ninth. Big shocker there getting ahead in the count. Only three three ball counts all night. In the air. Chase Ugly. Nothing is routine at this point. Ugly makes a catch. One gone. The only thing standing right now between Halliday and another perfect game was a walk back in the fifth inning. And everybody is nervous here. Halliday. All of the position players, the umpires. With the pitcher spot coming up, Dusty Baker will send Miguel Cairo, a Philly last year, to the plate to pinch hit. Well, another comfort for Roy Halladay is knowing how good his defense is behind him. He doesn't mind if they put it in play. He's very confident in the guys, especially on the infield, playing behind him. Cairo, a line drive guy. He'll inside out the ball. He likes to go to right field and up the middle. In the history of Major League Baseball, there have been four pitchers to throw two no hitters in the same season, at least two. Nolan Ryan is the last, 1973, with the Angels. Strike. One and two on Cairo. He's had perfect control of all his pitches tonight against the best hitting team in the National League, and he has dazzled them. They've tried stepping out on him, waiting him out. Nothing has thrown Roy Halladay off his game tonight. Pitch number 100 on the way from Halladay. In the air. Over is Valdez with room. Two outs. The Reds last hole Brandon Phillips and one more piece to the puzzle for Roy Halladay and he's a first pitch ambush hitter if he delivers a fastball strike gave him a fastball Phillips took it probably the best pitch he will get to hit this at bat. Struck it out in the fourth. Can't even begin to tell you how loud it is here, folks. Holiday is one. 
one strike away. The 0-2. A bouncer. Ruiz. In time! Roy Holiday has thrown a no-hitter!